Welcome to a cruise ship heist. Chapter 85. Lunch. Lunch in the buffet has fantastic food and excellent views, but the restaurant is a decadent treat. I never get to do this, Owly gushes. Technically, I'm not allowed in here, but I guess, like my father, I like to break the rules sometimes. That gets her a laugh. I squeeze her hand. Are you okay? I ask. I feel great, she beams. Not only was it good to share, but they care. I lost a family. I can't get them back, but telling the story is easier now. It's turning a negative into a positive. You sound like my therapist, Dad. We must have the same one. I think all therapists are the same, Jill says. You two should write a book together. Dad, let's. Owly leans in and kisses me on the cheek. What a brilliant idea, Tony says. You can write the forward for us, Jill. You'd be great at that, Owly adds. Jill enjoys the attention again and seems relaxed, but then she still thinks she is a good few million better off. What happens after the meal may be a different story. Lunch drags on as it can at sea, and then we retreat to the Crow's Nest Lounge, where it continues with early evening cocktails. I certainly succeed in keeping Jill and Tony occupied. Owly eventually stands. As lovely as this is, I have to do a show. Hey, E, I never saw you on stage last night, but I was told you were there. What did I miss? I ask. You saw exactly what you were meant to see, she says, and she's off. What was that about? Jill asked. The big dancing magic show. I never saw her. I panicked. I thought she was ill again. Lovesick, Jill says. Except she was on stage and did something. I would like to know what it was. I'll ask her. She'll tell me. Sadly, we missed the magic show, Jill sighs. I would have enjoyed it if I could have relaxed. It was good. Illusions and disappearing. But no E. I obviously missed something. And what makes it worse is they're taunting me with it. There are probably lots of things you're never meant to see, Jill adds dangerously. I'm not going to take her cunning for granted. I need to get out of this uniform. Jill stands with me and whispers. I've been trying to get you out of that uniform all cruise. I think I should go and change, Jill announces to the others, and I feel in danger. It seems daft that we're both off to do the same thing, but we're off to separate cabins, Jill says. As we walk together, Hunter is walking towards me. I spent almost a day on the blower to Miami about the trouble your stupid leap caused, he says, aiming his angry tone at me and ignoring her. Follow me. Hunter turns and leaves. I am saved. Jill is annoyed. I was hoping I could give you the dressing down you deserve, Jill says, unashamedly. Later. Chapter 86. The Setup. Hunter impatiently holds the elevator door, then lets it close behind me. Saved your sorry butt again, have I? What? Let's go for tea. I might have only recently left the restaurant, but it appears sea days can be all about eating. The maitre d' sits us at a table by the window, away from anyone else. Tea is welcome. The sandwiches and cakes, we both turn away. It is amazing how just a few hours ago this was busy with lunch and will shortly be serving dinner. I've been asked to talk to you officially by the company. I don't think it will be the last conversation, but the captain did an excellent job of carefully wording everything back to head office. I guess he knows everything that goes on within this ship. No, not at all, and it needs to stay that way, Hunter insists. Like all cruise lines, we work for an American corporation. They understand war, military heroes, and making money. You're lucky. Lucky? I wouldn't have described my trip this far as lucky. You're alive. No bee stings, no female-inflicted wounds. You may have earned a lot of money. May have, Hunter repeats. Have I, or does Maria Isabella want it all back? I ask very pointedly. Hunter eyeballs me hard. Do you trust anyone in this world? My daughter? No one else, not really. People can be bought. Trust me, Hunter says. No. 
We're doing the same job. You smuggled an orphan out of Syria. I couldn't believe the symmetry when I got the file on you. I suffer a momentous realization. Hunter chose me because I had skills in human trafficking. You're comparing Maria with Aulie? Hunter gives the smallest of nods, then explains in a deep voice. Two women, trapped, living in fear, one shot at, the other abused almost daily, both surrounded by killings. Let's cut the preaching. Did you find the money? Is there any chance I get my cut? He nods. He has the money. I don't want anyone to know I've got it. You're stealing it from Maria, for us. I want to know if she, with Jill, stole it from us. I sip my tea and take a moment. I did offer him the idea that Maria might have stolen her own money using Jill. He scoffed at me. Now he's showing that idea some respect. If this is the real start of us working together, it's a bit late. Too late. Tell her it's missing and she'll be angry. If she stole it with Jill and they discover it's now really gone, she'll be livid. How do you tell angry from livid? Exactly, Hunter grins. He could be a great life chess partner. However, he might not be telling me everything. I doubt he is. That's not what the company asked you to tell me. Correct. Chapter 87. More tea? Whatever the company has said could be irrelevant. I'm not sure they have a clue what happens on this ship. I could take Georgie and Auli away. Between us, we have two million in our cabins to live off, rent-free, in the sun. I could even set Christoph up with his own boat charter business in the Caribbean. A rumour has started on the chat sites. Could be corporate espionage. Often is. It could be just some spotty millennium. That norovirus has broken out on this ship. I take it it hasn't, I say. Doesn't matter whether it's true or not. The company's got to spin it off the front page, Hunter says. Why bother? While it's there, future bookings slow down. Okay, wag the dog. You did that already. Boatman is currently trending. I thought it was Batman. No, the company was worried about copyright, so they infiltrated and rebranded it as Boatman. That fast. They use a dedicated blogging house in India. Now, stories about your antics on the ship are being made to trend as they wage the virus into oblivion. I am so pleased to have been of service, which is what I said when I left military counterintelligence. So, all press and publicity are focused on this new story? Last night in the bar, apparently, you said cruise ships have to be tested in case they are commandeered for war. Georgie told you that? She told the captain, who relayed it back to Miami. Head office leaked that too. Wow, I haven't left counter-espionage after all. The company is now categorically denying that this ship is going to war. I'm so glad. You may laugh, but it made the morning TV. What? Well, in England, American news still asks for verification, Hunter says. Amazing. Such wonderful nonsense, I shrug. Sure, but it's screen time. Prime time, screen time. And we couldn't buy all those TV spots. The company loves it. You want me to jump off the back of the ship next? I ask. I can't fly. I'm only boatman. No. I can see you've relaxed so much since you got your money back. Don't go there. Let's get this done. In your contract, the company owns your performance on stage. And Owlie's, Georgie's, Ronnie's, and mine. Problem is, they don't own Jill Cohen's. She shouldn't have been up there, Hunter explains. You blew it. You blew our TV show. That could have been sold as a TV show? We both know why she was there. It could have been embarrassing, he adds. A thief's bad publicity. 
Luckily, she sat on the end. The recording of this morning's show has been reframed. Jill is trimmed off the edge, and snippets will be leaked. Just snippets. Sure, build the audience, let them demand the full show. And the bit about my dishonorable discharge. Did you lie? Hunter asks me. No. Then don't worry. The English discharged you. The American public thinks you're a hero. We love that even more. And we're at a tea party. How apt, I exclaim, then lean towards him, knowing this is not over. Do you mind if I toss the tea in the water, as it were? I wave to the waiter and order a bottle of wine. As he leaves, I look expectantly at Hunter. He'll need your cruise card. You're going to get a book deal. You'll be talking with company lawyers. It could make your daughter a star. You? I doubt it. And the neurovirus? Gone, Hunter confirms. Shame. I can cure neurovirus. I'd hold that back for a slow news day. I've never had the chance to say this before, but I'm so glad we met. I might have aired a hint of sarcasm. I'd hold on to that too. Madeira is a whole other problem. Hunter leaves an ugly pause, and I feel he is toying with sharing something else.